Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk uh, about electrophilic aromatic substitution halogenation of benzene, uh, <clears throat> but this time talking about uh, using fluorine and iodine. In the previous video, uh, I shared a reaction that looked something like this with uh, using halogen like chlorine or bromine and iron trichloride or iron tribromide as a catalyst and generating the, the halo benzene. Well, this reaction does not work for iodine. Iodine is not reactive enough. And if it's not reactive with fluorine, fluorine is way too violently reactive. So let's then talk about how you might do uh, electrophilic fluorination. So in order to do electrophilic fluorination, instead of using fluorine, which is terrifying, we need an electrophilic source of fluorine. Um, it's just, you know, it can't be F2. Things that are, are electrophilic fluorine sources are um, like diamino or dialkyl um, fluoroamines or fluoroammonium salts, things that look like this. <clears throat> uh, and, and one such substance is this, this diphenyl sulfonyl, uh, you know, let's draw out the, let's draw out the sulfur things so that we can Get a good understanding of what's going on here. All right, here we go. Is this thing um, where you know the the fluorine is attached to this this amine, and the amine's got these two phenyl sulfonyl groups on them? But ultimately, what we have here is a fluorine attached to something that is a, a good leaving group. And being attached to a good leaving group is something that will, uh, turns things into good electrophiles. So <clears throat> this reaction behaves itself. Uh, the mechanism of the reaction is very similar to any other uh, halogenation. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to simplify or, or condense the structure of the <clears throat> fluoramine reagent and uh, so the fluorine is electrophilic because it's attached to, to this good leaving group even though fluorine is the most electronegative element, it's still possible to have electrophilic sources of fluorine. Uh, <clears throat> and then the leaving group itself comes off uh, and, and is a, now a nitrogen anion. And so it's this species that's basic enough to remove the proton. Oh, there I am drawing the... Oh, hold on. I put the carbocation on the ring there. I apologize for that. It is this <clears throat> sort of uh, sulfonamid or bis sulfonamid that is uh, now basic enough to remove the extra proton. And there are other uh, electrofluor, you know, electrophilic fluorine sources out there. Uh, this is this is honestly the one that is the easiest to draw. There's some like bridged bicyclic things and, and so on. And, and when it comes to iodination, there, there are two approaches. Um, actually, let me go. Let me go up here and grab my original reaction. When it comes to iodination, there are two approaches. One of them actually looks a lot like uh, chlorination and bromination, except we're going to use this uh, compound iodine monochloride in the end. Okay. 
iodine monochloride is an interhalogen compound, so it's a, it's it's two halogen atoms, but they're not the same. Um, and so this reaction here works because iron is much more specific uh, or has a much stronger affinity for the chlorine than for the iodine on iodine monochloride. And so the active electrophile species involves the chlorine attached to the iron and not the iodine. <clears throat> and so we can be pretty confident that we have iodine here as the electrophile. This other thing is the leaving group. And then honestly, this reaction proceeds forward uh, as all of the other electrophilic halogenations using the, these metal catalysts. And I've forgotten a formal charge on the iron. There we go. Iodine, hydrogen. And then as, as you know, in, in this same kind of reaction, the, the iron chlorine bond breaks and it's one of these extra chlorine atoms that is the base. This reaction produces hydrochloric acid and regenerates the iron catalyst. So it does not need to be used in a stoichiometric amount. Ooh, europium. Got ahead of myself there. Iron trichloride. <clears throat> okay. uh, another approach, instead of using iodine monochloride, which maybe it, iodine monochloride is actually a pretty unpleasant compound, is to use iodine, but instead of acting, activating it with. Um, activating it with, with a metal catalyst, activate it using an oxidizing agent, an acid. And so these things react together to form uh, this fun reagent here, which is I3+. Plus. Um, and so once again, you have an iodine atom and it's attached to a good leaving group. And I'm not going to draw the mechanism for, for this particular version, but you can probably figure it out. A byproduct of this uh, redox reaction is water, so uh, water acts as a base in this case. In the next video, I'm going to start talking about uh, the friedel crafts reactions. These are a really important set of reactions because they allow for the formation of carbon-carbon bonds. Thank you for watching.